Michelle. Michelle, look this way. She's demanding, dependent, unpredictable, and unique. Is that noise? Is that noisy? She made her debut barely 14 months ago. And for someone so young and small, she's already accomplished quite a bit. Each day she's growing, and each day she's learning more about the new world around her. Objects, people, even her own body. To her, they're new subjects worthy of exploration. Let me see. Oh, they're pretty Let me see, Michelle. Okay. You gotta carry your back. Okay. Get the ball, Michelle. Yeah. Get the ball. In the past hundred years, our image of the child has become vastly more complex. Because of research and scientific inquiry, more is now known about the developing child. But with increasing knowledge, there's increasing complexity. The questions about the growing child are many, and not all have been answered conclusively. Uh, Pam, you think uh, Michelle will be quiet if we ask a few questions? I think so. With a bottle. Uh, why, uh, why do you uh, film so much of her and only her? She's our doll. <laughs> it's sort of like, uh, well, we know that she's growing up so fast, and and uh, we'd like to keep her this way. So many Always people say to us, um, we don't remember our children, they were that small. It seems so sad, you know. So we try to catch everything we can. How old is Michelle? 14 months. From the moment of birth, this little girl has been the subject of research, albeit informal. Her parents have observed her growth and, usually with pride, noted her many early accomplishments. So it seems like every day she's picking up more words. Uh -huh. She really tries to um, say what we say. And she's actually starting to put two words together now. But while the observations parents make about their children may be firsthand, they usually contain a bias that makes them inappropriate for scientific inquiry. Modern examination of developing children takes place along more formal lines and involves many areas within the domain of science. Different disciplines and different methodologies have been developed to study children. The psychologist uses experiments. The educational psychologist has tests of a variety of sorts. The anthropologist uses naturalistic studies techniques. Uh, to fully study children, it's probably necessary to put several methodologies together and use them in combination. For instance, in some research that we've been doing uh, in schools locally, we have studied children over the course of a year in their classrooms. We used an experimental design to select the children in the schools so that we would have control over relevant variables. We worked very much as the anthropologist in the sense that we were in the school observing week after week to see what was going on. When we designed tests to measure the outcome of instruction, we were working very much as the educational psychologist. So how do you study children? You have to use diverse methodologies and techniques to solve the rich problems that arise in understanding children's growth and development. Now the children aren't doing much. They're getting used to each other here. There's no interaction at all. Children are getting used to the environment. Okay, Eric and Jackie are playing with the toys. David and Sharon are just watching. Sharon is still sitting out down by those chairs. Eric is by himself drawing individual activity. Oh, now David's coming in. The three are talking together. While children are the object of much social and scientific attention, they're not always the easiest creatures to study in a controlled, systematic fashion. But over the years, researchers have developed a number of approaches to studying children. Observation by trained researchers is one approach, along with experimental studies, standardized testing, and interview studies. All of these techniques have proven to be of immense value in reaching an understanding of how children develop. What I'm looking for here is not only verbal interaction, but physical interaction and the development of physical interaction in a period of time. The children were strangers to each other, but in a matter of uh, five minutes or so, they were playing games that developed into patterns of leadership. 
And I was able to see this through <clears throat> using this technique of the hidden camera. And this type of study is very valuable uh, as a tool in studying child development. One other technique has also been of great assistance. It was pioneered by a scientist, himself a parent, who developed a procedure of research with his own growing children. His name is Jean Piaget, and his research technique is called clinical study. In Piaget's